trim the tops off the trim the trim the tots <laughs> Hey guys, it's Gaz and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making risotto and my favourite ingredients are going into it. I'm going to be using butternut squash and sage. I'm also going to be serving it with some of my aubergine bacon which I made in the ultimate breakfast YouTube video that I put up fairly recently. So first up, let's get the base of the risotto made and that involves chopping up some shallots and some garlic. So I'm going to be using three shallots, which I've just peeled, split them in half. I'm going to cut them up really, really fine. It's really important to chop your shallots as fine as possible, because if you have big lumps running through the risotto, it just doesn't work well. This risotto is so simple to make, and I'm making a few adjustments to make it vegan. I've got two cloves of garlic, which I'm just going to crush with my garlic crusher. It's easier if you get it all done first, then we can get it straight into the pan once it's hot. Preheat a saucepan over a medium heat. Add a touch of olive oil. Now that the pan is hot, I'm just adding my shallots and garlic to the pan. We just want to sweat that down slightly. We don't want to get any caramelization on it really. Just want to leave that for a couple of minutes before we get the rice in. It's really important to season at every stage, so I'm going to get some salt and some pepper in. Just a pinch of each. There's something amazing about shallots and garlic cooking with a little bit of salt and pepper. It smells absolutely incredible. They're nicely softened now. It's time to add our risotto rice. I've got two cups going in. This does, after all, expand and this will be enough to serve at least four people. Just mix that in. Make sure each piece of rice is coated in the nice onions, garlic, and salt and pepper. I've just turned the heat right down and it's time to glaze the pan with some white wine and make sure you've got some vegan white wine. I always struggle to say white wine when I'm on camera. I'm adding about a cup and a half of white wine. Just stir that in gently. You can turn the heat back up to medium now. I've got some really good quality vegetable stock and I'm just going to add this gradually. Make sure it's hot because we don't want to bring the temperature down each time we add it. And just a little message about the filling, the squash or if you're using pumpkin, that's fine. I've already pre-baked it. It's actually in the oven waiting for me to put in when the rice is cooked. All that caramelization there is amazing. I'm just going to scoop the nice flesh out of it. I'm going to leave the seeds and the skin and hopefully we'll get some nice lumps and we'll also get some flesh that will melt down throughout the risotto and create that really nice vibrant orange color which is full of flavor full of sweetness the good thing about roasting it separately is that you get all the natural sugars coming out of the squash which caramelize and it'll just add an amazing sweetness and earthy flavor to the risotto do keep checking the risotto it's looking really beautiful so far but it does need a little bit more stock make sure you're adding the hot stock and stir that in So I'm going to prepare this squash. I'm just going to get rid of the slightly darkened bits of caramelization. I'm just going to get this really nice soft flesh into this bowl before adding it to the risotto. Look at that. It smells absolutely beautiful. Sometimes we put the oven on at home when we're cooking other things and there's always a shelf spare. So if you ever have a squash like this or a pumpkin, just throw it in on the bottom shelf and just forget about it basically. Keep checking the risotto. You do need to check it often. A good little tip is to not throw away the butternut squash skin because you can actually get that back in the oven. Um, make sure it's at a very low temperature, around 110 degrees, and just let it dry out for about an hour and all the sugars will continue to come out of it and it'll taste absolutely amazing. Now that I've defleshed the butternut squash, I'm just gonna pop that aside until we're ready to get it into the risotto. The risotto has been cooking for about 15 minutes now, I'm adding some more stock, just giving it another turn 
This is the base for all different types of risottos. You can get as many different flavors as you like in there. Another one of my favorites is mushroom and leek. Obviously I'm Welsh, so I love a bit of leek in a risotto. So you can even use uh, dried mushrooms, use some dried porcini mushrooms, work really well. So yeah, do whatever you fancy. We're nearly there with this. I'm gonna leave that cook for a few more minutes. We may need to add some more stock. We need to check it for seasoning. Then we need to get our amazing roasted squash inside and also add some sage. Add stock as and when throughout cooking until the rice is cooked. I'm just stirring in some more stock. The risotto is nearly finished. To serve with it, as well as the aubergine bacon, I'm gonna be serving some crispy sage, which is probably my favorite herb. It tastes a bit bitter, raw, but when you fry it and get it all crispy, it tastes absolutely incredible, especially with the risotto, and especially with butternut squash, in fact. So all I need you to do is pick some really nice leaves, make sure you don't get too much of the stem, and I'm gonna get this frying in a little bit of oil. It just goes so, so crispy. If you don't wanna use oil, you probably can do it. I recommend putting it on a lined baking tray in the oven for around 10 to 15 minutes or until crispy, of course. So all we need to do is preheat a non-stick frying pan behind me, we'll get some oil in there and we'll get these fried off. But I think it's time to add the butternut squash to the risotto. I've just added a tiny bit more stock and you can see that the rice is almost trebled in size. So now it looks like it's gonna serve at least four people. Right, it's time to get our amazing squash in, which actually matches my t-shirt, which is quite handy. I didn't actually plan that, I promise. So let's get that in. I'm hoping that it melts through the risotto, but we're also gonna be left with a few lumps that add a bit of texture. But of course, we have the crispy aubergine going with it, and we also have the crispy sage. So just stir that through. We're not far off at all. Yes, look at that. You can see that some of the Squash is melted through it and we have still some nice lumps in there. I'm just going to let that cook out for a few minutes whilst we cook our crispy sage. I've just preheated this pan and I'm going to add a touch of oil. Keep checking your risotto. It's looking and smelling absolutely delicious. Try and be quite delicate when stirring it because we don't really want to mash up any of the nice chunks of squash. And that is almost ready to serve. Just turn the heat down. You can always add a little bit more stock if it's starting to dry out. That is beautiful. I've just got my sage and I've just lined a bowl with some kitchen paper ready to soak up any excess oil once the sage is cooked. But just keep checking the risotto. And that's what you want, that quick sizzle. They'll crisp them up more or less instantly. We will need to give them a little turn. I know it looks quite sad frying those beautiful leaves, but honestly, when they're crispy, they taste absolutely incredible. I definitely need to get some more adjectives because I keep saying incredible, amazing, nice. So that's it. That's our crispy sage done. That will continue to crisp them up. The excess oil will come off it. And I'm just gonna sprinkle over some salt to keep it crispy. The only thing I'm gonna to add to this risotto before serving is some nutritional yeast. And this just sort of replicates Parmesan. Adds a nice sort of cheesy flavor. You don't have to add that. That is looking beautiful. Right, let's dish it up and serve it with some of our crispy sage and aubergine bacon. And don't forget, if you want that recipe, go to my ultimate vegan breakfast and you'll find the aubergine recipe in there. So let's get it into the bowl. I've got these amazing rustic bowls. I'm just gonna simply spoon this in. Look at that, look at the colors. It's very filling risotto. So as I said, this will generously serve for people. Butternut squash is of course really good for us. Really high in vitamin C. So it's actually quite healthy. I like creating some nice height when I'm presenting my food. Making sure we've got a nice bit of butternut squash shining through as well. If you want to keep the rest of the risotto for another day, I recommend chilling it on a flat tray and once it's totally cool, put it into a container and into the fridge and it will keep for three to four days. I've got my aubergine bacon and that is really nice and crispy. I'm just going to stand that up. Mm. 
and look at these beautiful crispy sage leaves. Also, if you didn't want to fry sage, I recommend for a little crunch, adding some pine nuts or some pumpkin seeds. I actually wish I had some now and it would add a little finishing touch, but it still looks absolutely beautiful. I think that is pretty much ready to serve. It looks absolutely amazing. That is my butternut squash risotto with crispy sage and aubergine bacon. Another quick, simple dish, which is very healthy, perfect for a weeknight. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to give it a try. I'm really pleased with my risotto. I'm gonna take it outside and give it a try. This looks good. Mm. That is so nice, so, so nice. Do you hear that crunch when I ate the sage? That is the beauty of it, frying it in the oil. Tastes absolutely amazing. It doesn't taste oily whatsoever because I obviously placed it on the lined bowl with some of the kitchen towel in there, which just takes away the oil. It's just so nice, so, so nice. Mm. Oh, so good. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, Hit the bell if you want to be part of the notification gang. And I forgot to mention through the whole video that my book is available to pre-order on Amazon now. It's called Vegan 100 by myself. And if you just type in my name or Vegan 100 on Amazon, you can pre-order it. And I would really appreciate your continued support. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Look at that. So, so creamy. And I love the lumps of squash in there. Mm-hmm.